Uh, I mean, even with that, it wouldn't have mattered. But they just didn't want to lose the Arc Priest, I guess. They could have blocked um, two of that damage. What a game. What an absolute magical game. Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. Milky Smooth version 10 adjusted for the new alchemy format. We have a ton of amazing cards that are digital only for the new digital format alchemy. I personally have been having a blast with the new format. Uh, there are so many new decks and uh, new ways to play old decks as well, which is kind of what we're beginning to experiment with today. More on that as we break down the deck list, the strategies, the synergies, showcasing that in the gameplay footage, and then wrapping up with our final thoughts. It would mean the world to me if you supported the channel. A thumbs up, easy as that. And you can also subscribe if you want to check out more great content like this in the future. <laughs> so with that out of the way, let's take a look at Milky Smooth or Mono White Aggro version 10 for the Alchemy format. Alrighty, let's jump right into our decks here. I thought I had it up and it has disappeared. Number 10, let's go. You guys are getting a sneak peek as uh, to the upcoming content there. You're not supposed to get that in the videos. Uh, but here we have version 10 for Alchemy, 60 card, best of one, 2.5 average mana value, zero non-creatures, 37 creatures. Down to 23 land from the 24, uh, just because it's not that we have a lighter curve because it's actually heavier, but our curve itself is so beneficial uh, to having uh, a reduction in land because it's uh, it's too much. I, I, I can't even explain it. So, I mean, I'll, I'll attempt to. The Captain Everhart, or else it's just confusing, right? For two mana is a 1-1 one, one with double strike. And this uh, spells you cast from among cards you drew this turn. Uh, will cost one less to cast. So this really uh, helps our mana curve, right? Uh, our bottom line is when we're drawing a two drop or a three drop, now or even a four drop, it costs one less, which is absolutely incredible. And then we have the Inquisitor Captain as well for four mana, a three, three with vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, seek two creatures with mana value three or less, choose one, put it into the field. The other goes into your library. This is incredible, right? This is a four drop, three, three with vigilance. Eh, it's all right, but it gains another three drop, which is, you know, two, three drops basically for four mana is very good. I like that. So the captain can help us, you know, basically double drop. It's a nice mana, uh, reduction almost and then the captain itself both of these are new cards and they're incredible these cards are so good so not only does the captain reduce the cards that we drew this turn but spells our opponents drew this turn will actually cost one more to cast which is absolutely the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard of um the fact that we got more tax or stacks um effects within mono white is insane uh to recap Thalia Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. That's why we're using all creatures in the build. Um, I want to recap my thoughts on Thalia before the end here. Um, but while we're on the note of taxing our opponent, we also have Redain. Uh, Non-creatures, mana value four or greater that our opponents will cast are two more to cast. So Thalia taxes everybody. Redain only taxes our opponent and only on non-creature spells four or greater mana value. And um, we also have Elite Spellbinder. 3-1 with flying for 3 mana when it enters play, look at opponent's hand, exile a non-land card from it, and they can still cast that spell by paying an additional 2, so that's our last uh, stacks. And uh, through this, we can offset our opponent's mana curve and reduce our own, which kind of you know spreads the gap, so to speak, uh, within the two terms of value that we're trying to generate. Uh, filling around this, we have other new cards like Sigardine Evangel, Two mana, three one, probably one of the best cards I've seen Mono White get in a while. Uh, huge synergies within the deck too that we'll mention here. When it enters the battlefield, conjure a card named Sigardian Evangel into our hand. Discard that card at the beginning of your next end step. And when it enters the battlefield, tap a permanent you don't control. Holy Toledo. So not only does it draw a copy of itself, but it can also tap something when it enters. And then the next card that enters does that exact same thing. 
Much like the Intrepid Adversary, how you can sink all of your mana into it for massive value, the same thing can be done with Sigardian Evangel. It is absolutely amazing. I cannot get over it. And the synergies here with Adeline, right? Uh, Adeline gets one power for each creature that you have in play, and the Sigardian Angel is going to fill that up really quick. It's also going to tap their blockers, so Adeline gets a massive attack. Adeline's going to be like an 8-4 by the time you're done, and you're going to have a bunch of 3-1s sitting there for next turn, so it's absolutely bonkers. I really, really like it. Filling uh, around this, it's more of the same, right? We have the Intrepid Adversary, 3-1 with lifelink. It can pay 2 to put plus 1 counters on itself, and then our other creatures get plus 1, plus 1 by default. Very good, especially with Adeline. We also have the Usher, 2-1. It can boast for 2 to create the token, which is, again, great for Adeline. Boom, boom, boom. Brutal Cathar, as good as ever. 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Exile a creature. And then if it transforms back into itself from the Knight version of the Brute, which has Ward, pay 3 life and first strike, plus 1, plus 1 on the toughness and strength there, uh, or power and toughness, I should say, as well as really nice. So, um, you know, get this in play, grab something, flip it tonight, play it today, grab another thing, and just do that as many times as you can. And then the Legion Angel, you know, 4-3 flyer with other copies in the sideboard that happens to pull uh, other versions of itself. So there's a lot of really good value within the deck. The Intrepid, for example, spending all of our available mana, buffing up our whole field. The Evangel, playing a whole bunch of creatures, tapping our opponent's permanents. And then the Legion Angel, you know, just a big creature that draws itself for next turn that just repeats. So there's always a way to dump your mana into, uh, you know, a high-valued play within Milky Smooth version 10. So that's kind of the deck list. I hope you guys enjoy it. Faceless Havens here, as well as the new Snow-Covered Plains. The pixel art, I absolutely love it. Big fan here. Um, so that's the deck. New cards, Captain Eberhardt, Inquisitor Captain, and then Sigardian Evangel. So not too much has changed with Mono White uh, in comparison to some of the other decks that we've showcased. But uh, a couple really, really cool cards that are, um, quite frankly, too powerful to ignore. Uh, the Evangel, the Eberhardt, and the Captain blow my mind. So, you know, I am missing some of the other cards that we had to trim that we're not getting to play with, obviously, four copies of Brutal Cathar. Um, but that's into the next segment before we get into the gameplay footage which is what is the current meta like and now that's the question i want to ask uh, to all of you right is there still a justification to run thalia to run redain in um such bulk right we had to do this before because it was the only way to win but personally, and we'll talk about this more as we wrap up the video after the gameplay footage, I'm kind of finding that it's just a lot of creatures right now, and Thalia isn't really getting a ton of value like she once did. However, you know, that is subject to change as the meta matures. Um, of course, you know, aggro decks typically dominate an early meta, and then we move into the mid-range, and then finally, uh, that heavy, heavy control uh, which cannot be stopped. <laughs> so uh, anyways, you know, that's the, today's conversation. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, today's gameplay footage is really good. Uh, the longest match I've ever played with a mono white deck. I, I don't even know. It was it, It's a really good match. You guys are really going to enjoy it. So thanks for watching. Like the video, show your support, subscribe to the channel to help um, my bottom line out. And most importantly, have a magical day. We'll see you soon after the gameplay footage. Land is good, on the draw, a hand filled with three drops. Hopefully we can pick up a two drop and one drop and not just land, because this could be bad. Not a great start. Fearsome Whelp. In the house, dragons are so much cheaper. Intrepid out, you know, just playing the curve as best we can. I'm going to increase that dragon. Unless, of course, they're turn threeing it. Okay. Let's check out what dragons they have. Hopefully, it's none. Oh, Goldilocks. They can still cast that. <laughs> they can still cast it. 
All right. So that is uh, maybe problematic. No blocks. It just sucks that we're already down to 13. Cathar takes the dragon. For three, and maybe at some point we can catch up. Baseless Haven is strong. We can block that with Adeline, though. Wish we could double cast. Really wish we could. The Brute could have attacked, I guess. I'm worried about removal, though, so I want to keep two blockers back, almost. And as long as I don't have another dragon haste. Or just in general. These fearsome whelps putting in work. Hit for two, down to six. We can double cast. First, let's see what's in their hand. It's a frostbite on the other binder. And then a land. Okay, so let's double cast, flip the brute, take the whelp. Big hits, and we can come back here. Adeline defends against Faceless Haven. Big hits. Down to three. This is a close match. What in the world do they top deck? Here's the draw. Seven, eight available mana. So clutch. I don't know how we came back from that. Beautiful. On the play, a really nice hand. Not just because the brand new pixel snow art, but, um, you know, there's a haven here as well. Two drops, three drops. Two of our best two drops as well. Let's just toss Intrepid, see how it fares. I'm worried about Clerics. Another mono white deck I can maybe handle. Angel of Unity is a bomb card. What an amazing card. So this is just like a mono white party. Let's see what's in their hand first. Yeah. Get out of your righteous Valkyrie. Definitely mono white life gain. I think we just go crazy about it. Oh my gosh, it gets through. Okay. I'll allow it. Another veteran. And then the voice. And we have to cathar the voice. Holy Toledo's. Just popping off. They might not have a spell next turn, which would send it to night. And if we could flip that back today with a uh, another land here to double drop, uh, two evangels. That would be ideal. I'm just in with the binder because we could also, with four land, push up the Intrepid. Oh, they get a single cast. And that is a very good single cast. And they have that fifth land for another Valkyrie next turn. I almost want to flip it myself. No, just... We can already take it, so just take it. Mm 
Nice hit for three. Balancing their life total down from 27 will be the key component here. And also dodging any removal. <laughs> if they have removal, we're absolutely screwed. Don't shoot there. Okay. Right to the Valkyrie. This is a 3-5. That's pretty strong. They're back to 21 after the attack. Flyers tap, which is great. I don't think they're casting, so they're going to send it tonight. Let's just check it out. We're screwed. Yikes. Okay, that makes things considerably harder. We're losing the Cathar. They get their voice back. Considerably harder. We need that fourth land ASAP. We need to find more exile. Dang, yo. They're at 28. Righteous Valkyrie's so good. Like, how does that, as soon as it enters plays, immediately 8-8. <laughs> uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a ton of sense. Beautiful. We can't even double block it. Yikes. Hit for five. They have another veteran. You are such a dog. They've had a really nice hand here. And we bricked exceptionally hard. Good game. <clears throat> Up at the bat. Hand looks nice. That's what I said last match though, right? Usher in play. Let's see if we can find that uh, fourth line. <laughs> Boast. It's a good uh, way to fill your two drop with the Usher. I really like it. It's a good attacker, a 2-1, and it can make that creature, which is great. Because we have the Skyclave, I'm going with Adeline first. It just puts out more damage. And then we can take their 4-drop that they play. I'm not sure what it will be. And it also can survive, you know, things like the new Field Wipe. Uh, that's doing three damage to everything. What is it called? Electro... I don't even know. Inductive... I... Yeah. It escapes me. But I do know that this will be... An absolutely delicious hit. We're gonna save this Evangel for the turn after. This is an amazing hand. Because we can block... Uh, well, not block, sorry, but tap their blockers. So even if they kill the Skyclave, that's that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. What do you think, Maya? We doing all right? Yeah, she's like, you don't show me enough anymore. You gotta show the cat more often. Let's take a second to just appreciate Maya's victory. Good job, Maya. Keep it up, girl. <laughs> On the draw, land is good. Two drops are great. I would like to ask the question, do we still need to run a heavy Thalia-based deck? Because there's so many creatures right now. Let's get Captain Eberhardt in play. Double Strike's really great. Righteous Valkyrie is also fantastic. No blocks. Hit for three. We may as well just double Evangel. Half their Valkyrie. Another to our hand immediately in play. 
Um, we'll just keep it tapped. We hit for two, which is not enough, honestly. They have a Righteous Valkyrie in play. They're going to gain 30 life this turn. Faithful Disciple. When it dies, draft a card from its spell book. And, you know, we can think, look through its spell book here. And there's a lot of really good things. There's just no way to gain more life than they're dealing damage. And it's saddening to me. Just a guardian town. We're still not hitting for enough. You know what I mean? They just gained so much life. I mean, down to 16 is, you know, typically further than you'll ever get a cleric's deck. But uh, we're in the danger zone here. So I just blocked the Disciple? Getting hit for 8, down to 3. Our attack lanes are open. They get to draft, and maybe that's a mistake. We should not have allowed this. Oh! Let's see. Cleric class. That's fine. They have four and they just push into it. That's okay as well. Well, you say that. So we're going for three, six, nine, ten, eleven here. Simply not enough. Let's bind, see what we find. Just lands. But they have the Cave of the Frost Dragon. As a second flyer. Right? That's just going to be game. Well, I guess Valkyrie can only hit for two. We're down to one. So we need two blocks for Null Priest. It's Thalia and an Angel. We need a block on Cleric. Another... Well, that'll be Captain. So we can hit for... Two? Yes. Six damage. Let's see how this works out. I mean, they can bring another cleric back from the grave with the class, which is great. Then it's not the frost dragon. So they do go in the air. We're blocking and dying. <laughs> blocking and... Well, we can... I guess Thalia is better to survive. She does more damage. Down to one. Her Dane's not going to get the job done. I mean, it certainly helps, but now, you know, they still have two hackers, and we're hitting for 3, 6, 9, 11. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so close. And Intrepid, and we would have had lethal. Nice. That's a really close game. Why doesn't the shield boost my damage? <laughs> We're dead anyways. We'll just get them down to one and be like, good game, life gain. Life gain's really great. I'm semi-pleased with how we were able to get them 
them down to one. It's a nice match, right? Oh, they just take Redain as a flyer instead. It's like, what? Did they just misplay? But no, 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 no. That was clean. That was a clean match, you guys. That life gain deck is... Going first. We can do it. I didn't expect to lose any matches today. You know, Mono White's the strongest deck that has ever existed, apparently, to, uh... Or at least according to all the YouTube comments. <laughs> but, uh, is it still, is the question. Angel of Unity is such a bomb card. It's a good card. Good, good card. 2-3 Sentinel. Interesting. They're just going all out, eh? I'm immediately going to take that angel. It's so good! I don't need all of their cards coming out, uh, like, super buffed up, right? Let's just take that Sentinel out of play as well. We gain 3 life to 23. 5 cards in their hand, 2 land in play. They cannot tap the Sentinel without another creature. They can here, 2 mana available, leaving them open to 2 damage. Paragon in play to block. Captain out. Not only is it a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance, but now we can play... Skyclave for absolutely free. Holy Toledos. That's a little bit aggressive, isn't it? I'll allow it, though. We get in for two damage because of it. Squad Commander's amazing. Three one ones active. Oh my gosh. We have the shield to nullify that, but they get the plus one, which still sucks with a full party. That's a decent trade, is it not? Party's down to two because of the trade. Legion Angel in, and, you know, we just have won the lottery, basically. No attacks. I want another two-drop in case they don't play here. If they send it tonight, I want to send it right back today. The Antique Collector makes a food token, does it not? When it dies, shuffle... Uh, it into its owner's library. If it's in the graveyard, you uh, if you do investigate. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control perpetually gain. This, when this creature dies, you may shuffle it into its owner's library. If it's in the graveyard, investigate. I mean, we have so much life. But they still have that blocker. I'll take the captain. Or the commander. We have the captains. Shield. And then just like swing in. I'll allow it. They can only deal one damage to one thing. So, like, that's okay. Valkmiria Protector Shield will reduce all damage uh, dealt by our opponent's permanents and the spells they do by one. Is it spells or is it just combat damage? Yeah, just any damage that we're dealt. Oh, they can deal two damage with the double block. I didn't even think of the layer. I'll kill the lair. That's smart of them. Oops. I wasn't even looking at the land. My bad. My bad. The angel can't do anything either. So whatever. Dang, that's so sad. That's my bad. I was not even thinking of lair. Didn't even know it was in play. <laughs> Awareness levels? Through the roof. That's what it takes to be top 300 mythic player take one damage it's captain time my favorite card well one of 
Captain in play. And we have both captains out. Could you ask for anything better? Could you? I'm gonna still swing in. There's no way they've got more tricks. Oh, I guess uh, we just tapped ourselves for fun. Angel has three defense. They don't gain any life. Uh, so that's still good. I'm playing so sloppy. Maya, why are you letting me play like this? You're so distracting. This is all right. Ooh, Tazri's good. Tazri is actually a threat here. Land and play. We have five. We could... Thalia and Spellbinder? I think that might be best. Even having Redain in play might be alright. There's no attacks as long as Tazri's out. And they could use that ability at some point, right? They can, right here. Beautiful. Looking at the top six, revealing two uh, wizards, rogues, warriors into hand. That's very good. We need to get Tazri out of play immediately. Shoot! Okay, this is going downhill quick. We just need to push out these angels and hit them in the air. Attack, 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 attack. Go, 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 go. That's our only hope. Literally. Dang, yo. Nervous! This does not have Vigilance. So this is three. We just have to stop them from drawing cards over and over and over and over. We do have three first strike damage, and then it's up to them how they uh, declare blockers. Alright. And then it looks like the binder and captain. I believe you declare blockers first. Like, all they have to do is press space here, because they already picked the order of them. There's just a, a, a break between first strike and uh, regular combat. And now I think they're realizing that they kind of messed up the block order. They still kill some stuff, right? They're killing the captain and the binder, which is not bad. Well, they don't get the captain. That hurts. And there's the oops. Yeah, we kind of, uh, we felt they're coming. We angel in case we pull another land and then we can redeem. And Angel, that would be great. I'm going to swing in. With the Vigilance. Two and one. Just kind of cleaning up the field. Don't care about the collector so much. One flyer trades with the angel. Then we should have two more. Oh, but they can tap the angel. Until your next turn. Okay, that's bad. All right, because we can no longer block, correct? Yeah. But why attack with Angel of Unity? Seems strange. Only taking one damage.
Another angel. This is the most convoluted match I've ever, ever been in. Oh, and we drew this, uh, so it gets the cost reduction through Captain Eberhart. Nice. No attacks. You know how cool a Brutal Cathar would be right now? Oh, absolute five head. They have another layer, keep in mind. That gives me PTSD, so I have to check their land. Arc Priest is great. So that's another flyer. And they get uh, a very sizable buff on it. So they're kind of grabbing that advantage again. We need uh, the Evangel. We need the Intrepid. This would be of great uh, benefit to us. Even another Brutal Cathar would be absolutely uh, glorious. Okay, so one Angel is out of commission. And remember, they can still sack for Indestructible on everything else. So this is something that we need to keep in mind. Make sure that the attacking creature is only doing one damage to the first strike creatures, because if it gains Indestructible, that two damage would still kill it, even though the first strike would typically stop that. All right, no attacks. The captain with the cost reduction is absolutely amazing right now. So good. We just swing for four. Correct? They have the sentinels that don't do any damage. They still chump block, though. We just get in for 12. Oh, sorry, for four down to 12. It'd be cool if that hit for 12. <laughs> They have a juicy looking field, you guys. Intrepid, Brutal, Evangel. The Evangel would be super cool. Just tap all their stuff. Alright. I assume they just push up the Angel of Unity because it has that life gain already. So it would be... What, like a 5-8? What? Doesn't it get plus... Oh, it only... I thought it got plus one for each. Sorry. My bad. Another land. Let's swing for eight. We can block with the Haven if they're coming in aggressively next turn, but the shield should save us. Okay, we see one chump block. We get in for four, down to eight. This gets shuffled uh, back, and they get a clue. Uh, well, the investigate shenanigans, right? Because we didn't get the exile. And that kind of hurts. Uh, giving them a draw is never pleasant, but... Is what it is. Crazy. Crazy, man. They're going to come back and beat us. I just feel it. Another angel. No, 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 no. Not like this. Not like this. An Arc Priest of Iona that's massively buffed. No, they're buffing this thing. Uh oh. An Orator. This is 6 6. <sighs> Yikes. They're gonna shut down a Legion Angel. The Arc Priest can push up the Angel twice because there's two of them. Double blocking sucks because they have Linvala, but if they're sacking Linvala, that's not bad. They only have one shield uh, payment here.
do they attack? Like, their back's against the wall. It can't kill them both anyways, even if they do pop Indestructible on it. And I can replace Redain, if that's where they're going with that. Did they kill the Binder instead? That seems weird. Maybe they know this is a Legendary, right? There's, like, we can play multiple... Oh, oh! It's showtime, baby! The Guardian for one. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Not like this. Another into our hand. Another in play. We can do this two more times. Not like this. Not like this. That's good game. That's 100% good game. Oh, they can give Hexproof. This will save them. The Hexproof right here will save them. <laughs> oh, shoot. Still going in. Because they, uh, they're they gone after anyways, right? So let's just spend our mana. That does give us a little bit of an advantage. Still uh, a little nervous, but things are getting better. Things are getting better when Vala is gone. We have... The ability to swing now in with Redain because Linval is gone. She has Vigilance, which is great. Sentinel has been dealt with. Angel of Unity. I don't know if that stays or not. This has been the longest mono-white match I've ever played. My matches are like a minute, two minutes, maybe three minutes. This has been, uh, this has been something else. Wow. That was a good draw. I like the Evangel so much. I'm happy that we got to sh kind of showcase that to you. Would have been lethal without the Hexproof. Um, but how often is your opponent running, you know, instant speed Hexproof on the field, right? They picked up a land. So I think that's probably game. We have a ton of... We just have four brand new chump blockers, right? Which we only need one of. We also have the shield, so it's like, who cares? Oh, the flying. The flying, the flying, the flying. The orator, the layer, both with flying. But it's just not enough damage. Oh, the life gain is good, though. That life gain is good, though. Holy Toledo, is that life gain is good. So they're going up to 11. All right, so they have only the angel to block. They're at 11. We have for f four, eight. Yeah, let's just take it, right? We're only here for 10. And then they have one, two, three, four, five, six other blockers. But we have four, five, six, seven, eight other attackers. I'm pretty sure this does it. Math has never been my strong suit. Well, I'm not an engineer anymore. But 12 attackers? Come on, that's gotta be enough. That has got to be enough. They don't have a shield, right? So we should be okay, right? One angel gets stopped. 
One Legion Angel gets stopped by their Angel of Unity. And the rest should be fine. They want to kill the Skyclave. But these uh, Evangels deal more damage. I guess that's what the tokens are for. Tokens die, Evangels survive. They still have the 4-2 to block the Captain or Thalia. So we're doing 4, 5, 6. Yes, that's just the kill. I think maybe they forgot about Double Strike. Uh, I mean, even with that, it wouldn't have mattered. But they just didn't want to lose the Arc Priest, I guess. They could have blocked um, two of that damage. What a game. What an absolute magical game. That was good. That was Milky Smooth version 10, getting down and dirty. My question still remains, is Thalia and Redain still as important in this version as it was in the last? I seen Redain save us in that party matchup. Without her, we would have been toast. The shield, um, very valuable. And I like that it's a legendary that can be played with both sides. That makes the versatility of the deck quite high as well, much like the Angel, the Evangel. Like, um, you're getting good value from each of your cards, which is nice to see, considering there are so many legendaries here, right? The Eberhardt, uh, Thalia, Adeline, um, so even Redain, right? So uh, there's, there's a lot of legendary creatures here, so it's nice to have some of them that are uh, super playable. With that being said, the Captain is an absolute banger. And I think that potentially Thalia is moved into the sideboard. Maybe this becomes a best of three deck. Thalia is to the sideboard. Redain can s probably go to the sideboard as well. And, uh, you know, with Thalia gone, that opens up non-creature spells to us. We can take Maul of the Skyclaves, stuff like this. And I know the Captain Eberhardt would just love plus two, plus two and flying, right? Three, three with double strike, ah, seems all right. So that's kind of what I've been thinking with the build is that we need to, in order to be most effective with uh, our, our, our DPS, <laughs> is uh, to bring it into best of three. Right now, best of one, probably it still is safest to play in this variant or version, but something that we could look at in the future is making a more aggressive version because, you know, how aggressive is Thalia really? The 2 1 with first strike at 2. Mm, it's definitely not double strike. It's definitely not an Evangel or an Intrepid. We know this. Uh, it is still good, but it's not as good as it could be. That's my opinion. But it's better to have something of subpar uh, performance than nothing at all, right? And that's what would happen without the tax, is we would have nothing with all because, you know, we're gonna get hit with a field wipe, uh, things like this. That's just my personal opinion. I'd love to know what you guys think. Hit me up in the comments below. Have a magical day. Make sure to like the video on your way out. And if you haven't joined the community Discord yet, get in on that. And mark in your calendars. I've not made my official announcement yet, so this is actually the first mention of it, other than potentially on our Twitch stream today is uh my birthday's coming up on december 16th not gonna tell you how old i am you're all gonna have to figure it out and then we're gonna have a big old laugh uh again on december 16th we've got some cool stuff here uh bought myself a little a little gifty dues right so we're gonna enter the crimson vow uh with a gift bundle and i'm supposed to have some some other goodies coming in hopefully on time but you know shipping right Anywho, have a magical day. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon in the next.